My sermonette this morning is called The Fruit of the Spirit. In our endeavour to live godly lives, lives that make us stand out from the crowd, we find we can't do it on our own. That's why God gives us his Holy Spirit to become part of us, to guide us, and to give us the qualities we need to succeed. Open your Bibles in Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5 we find in verse 22, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. We're going to go through these fruit one by one to see what they can do for us. And the first one we start with is love. This is probably the most important of the fruits of the Spirit. Perhaps that's why it's first. What is love? It is the unselfish, benevolent concern for another. The object of brotherly concern or affection. The high esteem which God has for his human children and the high regard which they, in turn, should have for him and our brethren. The self-denying, self-sacrificing agape love which is the foundation of our Christian life. One of the messages that comes through loud and clear from studying our Bible is the importance that God the Father is placing on the need that everyone learn how to love Him, love ourselves, love one another, and even to go as far as to be able to love our enemies. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is commonly referred to as the love chapter. And starting in verse 4, we find the qualities of true love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. It thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. The next one on the list is joy. This can be a tough world to live in at times. Many people have had the joy knocked out of them by situations in their lives, some of their own making, some not. Look at people as you walk around town. See how many long faces there are. Life is beset with problems, but we need to look on the bright side. If we look in the right places, and there is a lot of good in this world, and if we are growing in the grace and knowledge of God, he will restore to us the joy of Christian living that we may have lost. What is joy? Great delight, gladness of heart, that deep abiding inner rejoicing that comes from knowing and serving God. Inner happiness. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, and in verse 12 we find... Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you also may be glad with exceeding joy. The joy of our Lord is our strength. That is why it's so important that we have the level of God's joy in us. Without God's, God's joy operating in your life, things can begin to dry up. Nothing is ever fun anymore. Everything can start to become a chore. Before you know it, you'll start to withdraw from others and life and general. Rejoice in the Lord and what he has given us. Third on the list is peace. Peace is another quality that we need, especially with all the uncertainty that we have in our lives today. Jobs are no longer as secure as they used to be. You never know when you could lose your job and thus your income. Terrorist activity is a constant threat, not so much in this part of the world, but for some it is very real. It's very easy to lose your sense of peace and get caught up in the turmoil. It was during a time like this that God chose to bring me back into the fold. Bad things had happened in my life and I was very mixed up. My mind was like a piece of string screwed up into a ball and spinning. I remember throwing myself on my knees and crying out to God to give me peace. And he did. The ball of string was immediately untangled and straightened out. I had the peace that I asked for and it was beyond understanding. 
I knew then what I had to do from that point on. Peace is the sense of well-being and fulfilment that comes from God and is dependent upon his presence. The inner tranquility and poise of the Christian whose trust is in God through Christ. Long-suffering. One of the main definitions of the word long-suffering is that it is referring to patience. Patience is another sorely need quality in this fast-paced world in which we live. Watch people standing in line at the supermarket or McDonald's and see how short their fuses are. Road range can be a problem as well. This is all caused by a lack of patience. There are times when we need to wait on the Lord for answers to our prayers. God doesn't work in the same time frame that we do. Things don't always happen when we want them to. God knows so much more than we do, and his timing will always be perfect. Though sometimes it is hard for us to understand. When we have to wait, we need to exercise patience. Long-suffering is patience, endurance, steadfastness, and forbearance. Learn how to ride and flow with the patience of the Holy Spirit in your daily life and walk with the Lord. You will then be able to enter into a much more restful, peaceful state of mind with your mind and emotions. Next on the list is kindness. As a result of more people being impatient, having short fuses and with everyone always being in a hurry, many people have lost the ability to treat each other with kindness and respect. A kind word, a kind action to another person can really do wonders for them. The quality of kindness goes hand in hand with the quality of love. You cannot help being more kind to others if God's love is throwing, flowing through you. Kindness is the steadfast love that maintains relationships through gracious aid in times of need. Goodness of heart, serving, graciousness, benevolence. Kindness is a beautiful quality to have as part of your personality and something worth striving for. Next on the list is goodness. One of the key fruit that people notice is the quality of goodness. A good Christian will be taken over by this in all facets of their life. Goodness is not a mere passive quality, but the deliberate preference of right over wrong, the firm and resistant, persistent resistance of all moral evil, and choosing and following of all moral good. A good person will be trustworthy and kind, helping others at every opportunity. Goodness is kindness and actual manifestation, virtue equipped for action, a will to do always what is right. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is something we see too little of these days, and it is something that God's people should show the way with. Once we've entered into a true relationship with God, we need to stay faithful to Him for the rest of our lives. If God brings you a wonderful mate, children and good friends, then he will expect you to stay loyal and faithful to all of them. A true friend will stay by your side for, the, for life through thick and thin. <clears throat> Just as God will stay faithful in his relationship with you, he will expect you to stay faithful in your own personal relationships with the people in your life. <clears throat> Faithfulness is fidelity which makes one true to his promise and faithful to his task. Steadfast, dedicated, dependable, and worthy of trust. This is one quality that God is watching for. He is watching who is going to stay loyal, true and faithful to him, and who will stay true, loyal and faithful to the friends and family he brings into our lives. Gentleness. Many men draw back from this one. It's not the macho thing. But since we must model our lives on Jesus, we must walk as he walked. There were times when he would set people straight and be tough about it. But there were other times when he was gentle, filled with kindness and love. Gentleness is gracious, kindly disposition, controlled strength, mildness combined with tenderness. If all our children ever hear from us are stern words of rebuke and criticism, then they are never balanced with words of love and gentleness. Then after a time they will start to pull away and we will lose them and their love and respect. Last on the list is self-control. Because of our human nature, we all have weaknesses in some areas of our lives that we find difficult to change and control. 
Self-control is a necessary fruit to help us turn our lives around and live for God. If we don't have self-control, we will have very little victory over things like bad temper, unforgiveness, and vices such as smoking and alcohol abuse. <clears throat> Some of us have major battles in our lives as we make the changes necessary to overcome the obstacles in our path. Self-control is restraint or discipline exercised over wrong behaviour. This quality is needed to obtain victory over the lusts and desires of the flesh. These nine qualities are given to us when we receive the Holy Spirit, but they don't come free. We have to do our part. We have to strive to achieve them and work to maintain them, but if we succeed, the rewards will be great. If we endeavour to follow Christ and walk as he walked, these fruit will help us along the way. Do you have them in your life? This is John Hickey for the Continuing Church of God.